Today's discussion will be about the first resurrection. What is the first resurrection? And how can we take part in it? In order to walk in the way of the light, one has to connect, make that spiritual umbilical connection to his or creator. There is three types of awareness, three types of renewal, three types of resurrection. Let's deal with the first type of awareness. There's two types of this awareness. One, you are aware that I'm talking to you now from wherever you are in the world. I'm broadcasting from England, more specifically London. So there are three types of renewal, three types of awareness, three types of resurrection. What do I mean by this? Before I explain the three types of awareness, renewal and resurrection, let me start with the two types of awareness. So that's the first type. The second type of awareness is when you make that spiritual umbilical connection to your creator. You cannot make a spiritual connection with God. To make a connection with something, it's like a connection between you and your mother in the womb. That umbilical connection. To make a connection with someone is like you and somebody got emotionally involved. You and somebody make that connection. You have to physically be connected to someone. So you can't form a relationship with God. You can only form a relationship with man, with animals, and so on, and maybe with a ghost or something. You would have to know what it is and see what it is. You cannot do these things with God. I will use the word God for the ease of conversation, because that's what you're used to. Until you have attained a higher level of awareness, I will have to speak out of terms. So for now, I'll speak out of terms. Speaking in terms is mostly for council members and those who are and members of the, 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 the this way, the way of the light, who have obtained a higher level of awareness. So that's one type of awareness. The second type of awareness is when you make that spiritual, umbilical connection to your Creator. In order to make this spiritual umbilical connection to your Creator, you have to have walked in the way of righteousness and holiness first. You cannot become holy unless you're righteous. So first, you would have to have walked in. The, you'd have to have been a righteous man or woman, meaning that you've done righteously. You've done righteous deeds. You've done the right things. There's no such thing as right or wrong. But I'll use this word for the sake of conversation. You can't be indulged in buggery, fornication, sodom, uh, adultery, lying and stealing, and killing and raping, you know, hating people. You, you can't be walking around with poison, with a poison heart and a poison mind and as a consequence a poison soul, a dark soul, empty shell. You don't walk in the way of righteousness. You cannot become holy. And that's the whole truth. That's the holy truth. That's the holy fact. That's a fact. You cannot become holy unless you're righteous. You cannot take part in the first resurrection unless you're holy and righteous. Holiness and righteousness is two different things. Many people are righteous. Lots of churchgoers are righteous. The average man and woman you see walking up and down every day, going about their business, they are righteous people, the majority of them. They don't rape, they don't rob, they don't steal, they don't kill, and most of them don't like telling lies. Very hard to find one of those these days. But, ah, still have some faith in them. I don't believe most of them like telling lies. It's uh, getting to be a rare thing nowadays. You only have to look at your, um, your, your, your you know, these local pastors and, and it's all about lies. Either they're telling lies on God, are they telling lies on man? Or are they telling lies on what they call the devil? I always wanted to, I was struggling to form this spiritual connection. I, you know, I prayed. I, 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 you know, I did a lot of soul searching. I followed everything to the book. I became John the Baptist the second. Uh, you know, at one point I wanted to step out there and blast them with a word from the wilderness. So I was really concerned that I did not have the spiritual connection to God. I could not feel the spiritual connection. This umbilical spiritual connection to my Creator was never there, was never connecting. Much like a child was connected by the placental or the umbilical connection to the mother, I was never connected to the Creator. And that what that's 
that was my problem. That was my spiritual or one of my spiritual battles. I could not find that spiritual connection. And at the same time, I had to be doing battle against the diabolic, against malevolent forces, against the forces of darkness, against the Satan and the children of darkness. Because there were some forces, I tell you something in life, you have some forces that are fighting you all the time. You have forces against you all the time. You know, whether it's just wicked, sinful, evil people that just just want to see you disappear. They just, they just, they, they, they don't want to see you. They, they prefer to see you dead. They prefer to see you suffer. They prefer to see you downtrodden because they're of their father, the devil. Devil they are. And the works of their father, the devil. So the, so I was going to be that, I, I, I at one point, in my spiritual journey, when I wanted to, when I was seeking the face of God, so to speak, you know, I, I, I was seeking to find that relationship with my Creator. I was seeking to find that close connection to my Creator. I was seeking this. I prayed. I just, I, 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 I did everything I could. I got down on my knees every day. But I just could not find this spiritual connection. I was not feeling it. And I asked Father and I prayed and I say, Father, only you can provide the answers. Father, I pray and ask that you permit and allow the angels to reveal the answers to these questions. I seek to find this higher level of awareness, which is different from knowledge, wisdom and understanding. There is a higher level of awareness that one needs to attain in order to be able to walk in the way of the light. For example, I could tell you things and you may just understand them, but the meaning, meaning is what we lack many times. And this is what I was lacking, the meaning. Most people, they, they know they have a reason to do what they do. They have a purpose to do what they do. The most important thing is the meaning. If you're doing things without meaning, you're wasting your life, you're wasting your time, and you're wasting your soul. And you, as a consequence, will also waste your eternity because you will fall in the flames of heat in eternal darkness and damnation forever. This is a fact. Eternal damnation awaits. How many times have you seen, you know, manifestations of your, of people who have once, or people who were once alive? And every time you communicate and every time you, they manifest and every time they communicate with you, they're always saying, he's coming, hide, run. They're always on the run, even though they exist on the other side. If they are souls that are found to be unworthy, a hurt-bound spirit is a hell-bound spirit. They will never ascend to the light. In my previous programs, I talk about souls that have crossed over. Not all of us will stay in hell. It is hell. Not all of us will stay there when we die. Some of us, many are called, but only few. Only few. So I could not find that spiritual connection to my Creator. I abstained from eating certain because I was following biblical theology, following the philosophical thinking of men. Not so. You cannot find your way to God through a book. You cannot find your way to God via some verses. A book is a bunch of pages with ink on it. You cannot find a spiritual connection through a book. That book you walk around carrying in your hands thinking that you're smart. You're wasting your time. You cannot find God in a book. You cannot find a spiritual connection through a book. It has to be through you, between you and your Creator. Not the verses of a book, whether it's the Bible or the Quran or the Talmud or the Torah or the Tanakh. You cannot find God through customs and practices. It doesn't matter if you're a voodoo worker. It doesn't matter if you, you do witchcraft and you jump around fire in your grass, grass, skirt. It doesn't matter what ritualistic events you do or practices you do. These ritualistic events, they're just rituals of men. 
They're just things that you put together in a construct and say we're going to do this and this and this at a certain time every day. Those are the rituals and the customs and the practice of men sacrificing animals to your God. God, what God would... They paint God as some depraved, hungry, power, hungry monster sitting some part of the universe, you know, with a, with, on a golden throne, with a crown on his head. Some groups out there, they'll say that God has a big afro hair. He has got black skin and eyes of fire, you know, skin of brass, hair of wool, and they describe what their God is. They're defining their God. You can't define your creator. You're wasting your time. With all of this biblical babble, all of this biblical theology is all babble. Ninety percent of the Bible is wrong. All the other religious books, ninety percent, Christianity only has ten percent. Particularly Catholicism, because that's one branch of Christianity. All the other groups of the Abrahamic religions. I'm not talking about Islam, because Islam is an Abrahamic religion. But I'm talking about most of the monotheistic religions because you've got the polytheistics and the the, the, the the Muslims you know these are two that follow the monotheistic points of view in the one God concept in fact I wouldn't say Catholicism or Christianity well Catholicism in particular is they believe in three gods Father Son and Holy Ghost they're three different things but they try to say it's three in one I don't know how you get that but that's ridiculous nonsense because they're defining their God they're telling you who they are, what they are, and where they are. You, it's, you can't define your creator. You're wasting your time. You're saying that you're monotheist, but you're a bunch of polytheists. Because you have various divinities of gods. God is various divinities in the various divine states. Ghosts and God knows what other divine states that they're defining their creator as. The Mormons believe that, you know, if I'm not mistaken, the moments of the Jehovah Witness, one of them believe that there's a God in some, some corner of the universe and he's got a, he's got two sons, one the devil and the other one Jesus. I think it's the moments, if I'm not mistaken, I stand corrected. They believe that, watch that cartoon, the moments cartoon, the band one, who made that thing up if it's the moments or not. But anyway, I'll go with it. Apparently, they have some God, they believe that um, their God is in some planet somewhere. And that he has two sons, Jesus Christ and the devil. And both of them came to earth. And Jesus came to earth to save mankind from their sinful ways. And the devil came to break down whatever Jesus had built up. Jesus is trying to save and the devil is trying to destroy the souls of men. That's how the biblical, that's how the theology, that's the theological concept they have of God and the devil and hell and man and all that stuff. And uh, Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he went back to the planet of the apes or planet of the... Or whatever they're creating there and then he's now heading off with beautiful ladies around him virgins or some kind of I don't know it's all beautiful ladies or women with him heading off to another planet to create the planet of the apes or the planet of angels or the planet of man again uh, God knows our planet of gods maybe the planet of gods while the devil is stuck down here with us possessing most of us of their father the devil now at least that much I can believe it most of the people you see go by they, 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 they carry a lot of burdens with them, all this poison and hate. Every day they get up and all they have in their hearts is I hate you, I dislike you, I don't like you, I don't like your face, I don't like your beard, I don't like your hair, I don't like your eye color, I don't like your skin color, I don't like your teeth. And they don't like, like nothing. They get up and think people owe them something and you have to like them. He's not one of us. Oh, he's not a good old lad, he's not a lad. They, 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 all these various things they will hate you for. If you dress a different way from them, they hate you. If you look a different way, you have people like that. They're everywhere in the world, all over the world, they're like that. More so in some places than others. I admire some of what the Muslims, they do. They have some very good practice and they do try to be good. I can attest to that because I go around most of these people myself. I interview a lot of their imams and I'm telling you that uh, they, they have some good practice, very admirable. I mean, you have to be devoted to the cause for you to get up out your bed five times a day to go to a particular place to worship and pray, show reverence and honor. You have to really be devoted. Even though they're misguided, it is easier to work with religious people than the unreligious people. Because the unreligious, because the people who are not religious, they will find it difficult to 
to be loyal or committed to the cause. When, especially when it comes to spiritual matters, yet alone to be disciplined in a particular way of life. Here at the way of the light, it's a way of life. In order for you to be righteous and holy, you have to be disciplined. You have to conform to a certain attitude of the mind, which will come out in your behavior towards others and yourself. Some people are self-loathing to the point where they will hate themselves to destruction. They get so big they can't even move under their own weight. They hate themselves so big. I'm not having a go at fat people. What I'm saying is that uh, you, 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 you have to look after number one. You've got to, you have to care about yourself. Oh, if, you, if you don't even care about your own self, but why, would, why would you worry about your soul? My point is we have to do all we can. If we see that our portions are too much, we cut down. If we see that the type of food we're eating is making us put on too much weight, you cut down on the sugar, you cut down on the salt, and you cut down on the carbs, and you cut down on all that calorie calorie intake you cut down and stop blaming genes and stop blaming the government and stop blaming society and even although you may get a lot of money to to dispose of in your own way it doesn't mean you go kill yourself with it why not put it to better use it's a bit like the gluttony of the churches they get all this contribution from the parishioners and all this help from the people and they glut, they take the money and they, they dispose of it in ways that are no good to nobody but themselves. They build all these big castles or temples, they call churches and temples and monasteries and all that. These massive places cost millions of millions of pounds or dollars. And, and, and what do they do with it? They put a certain people there, them and their friends. The little poor people that's giving all this money to make the empire rise are not looked after. None of those people are looked after in the way at least they ought to, giving that they, they give all this money. And of course the church will say, well, it's not the people's money. We invest in banking, we invest in real estate, we invest in, 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 in companies, offshore companies, we invest in this bank, we invest in that. And all these institutions, they know are fraudulent. All these institutions are not righteous. They, 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 they're not good institutions because most of their money is questionable. To, the most of their attainments are questionable to say the least. Their dealings are questionable. It's not moral at all what most of these companies do. I'm not saying you can't do business with them because we have to do business with the devil. But what I'm saying is that you can't rely on, the, on, on sinful people. You've got to come up with a better way as opposed to just doing a deal with the devil all the time. Go and have a look at my other programs about what is the devil and so on and you get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. But just for the ease of conversation, I'll use these words. So the, 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 the second, the first resurrection, you cannot, and I repeat this, it is impossible for you to take part in the first resurrection, the first renewal, the first awareness. It is impossible for you to become aware through divine intervention. The first awareness, as I say, there are two types of awareness. The first of the three types of awareness, but we're dealing with two subcategories, let me put it that way. In fact, I will combine the two, the first and second resurrection. So I'm dealing with the first and second resurrection, but it's two subcategories, as I say before, two types. And that is your connection with your Creator. You cannot become aware unless you make that connection. The second type of awareness is that you're aware that I'm talking to you now. You're listening to me and you're aware of what I'm saying. That's a different type of awareness. That's of the mortal kind. I'm talking an awareness of the spiritual. I'm talking awareness of the immortal kind. That's the first type of awareness. The second type of awareness, and I'm dealing with the three main ones, the, the two main ones now, not the subcategories. Now, the first type is the spiritual connection. You've got to have that, otherwise you're wasting your time, because much of what you will experience is through divine intervention. For example, when I deal with the diabolic, I always get into trouble, because you cannot fight the devil. You cannot fight evil yourself. So I ask Father to permit and allow the angels to do for me what I cannot do for myself. Because one thing you have to remember is that God is not going to do for you what you can do for yourself. For example, if I am hungry, I better go get that food to eat. If, if a car is out of control and it's coming your way, and it's heading your way, you better get out of the way. 
No angel is going to swoop down from heaven and pick you up and say, I save you, my child. That those are very rare events. If at all, they happen like that anyway. You, you, you see trouble coming, you, you better prepare for it. If you know something is about to happen or somebody is coming to, to do you something to kill you, 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 you better try to stay away from that person. You, you can't, the devil cannot have you have you have your left hand firmly gripped while you're stretching out your right hand to God. You're wasting your time. God is not a rival to the devil. God is not a, because there's no comparison between the creator and, and the creation. So there's no rivalry there. No. God did not create them. And the, the scholastics and the ecclesiastical scholars, they had a lot of problems uh, because most of the Bible, the Torah, the Talmud, the Quran, and all those books that are out there are made up by this. It's just the concepts of men. And uh, for example, I give you an example. Uh, Abraham, I think it's the book of Joshua or Ezekiel, Isaiah, one of those books. Uh, Abraham was looking for God. Well, God wasn't lost, but he was looking to find God. He was lost. And when he went out to find God, he said the moon was God. And he said, it's in the Bible. You can, you can search for it. It's, it's there. And when he saw the moon, he said, well, that's God. And then he says, well, the sun is God. He lost his mind. And then he said the sun was God. And then he said, no, but God created the sun so the sun could not be God. You see, what he was doing is to try. He doesn't have a connection with God. It, 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 none of these people in the Bible, they write about had any connection with God. Because they went out looking for their God can't find him you need a spirit i was like them blind walking in darkness they have no spiritual connection to god and because they don't have a spiritual they, they, they're looking all the time and they're looking for god in something the moon the stars the sun where is god we can't find him as if god is lost you're lost you need to be found and you need to find your way back or you need to find your way to God before you're lost forever, meaning you die. It's after you die, you're lost for eternity. So the first and second resurrection, uh, the f so we talk extensively about the first resurrection, and you cannot be holy unless you're righteous. You have to be righteous first. So in order to take part in the first resurrection, have any chance of communicating directly with God, having any chance of forming that umbilical connection to God, you've got to be righteous. Second, you've got to, you've got to be holy. I am not for turning. Your ways are not my ways, and my ways are not your ways. I walk in the way of the light, best I can. I strive to attain righteousness and holiness at the eyes. That's my lifestyle. It's a way of life. You've got to be disciplined and live to live this way. Got to be disciplined. There's no room for error. And I'm not for turning. So it is incumbent on all of us to try and strive to be good. Being good is, means to be righteous, to do the right thing. Do the good thing. That you know you're not supposed to do that. You know. For example, boogery. It's a form of boogery is, is sodomy. It doesn't matter if you do it with your wife or you do it with another man or, or so on. Most people think that this is okay. I hear people say it's okay. The pastors are doing it. Everybody's doing it. People will tell people that. They think a man doing it to his wife and not another man. Not. It's the same thing. And the spirits are watching you. Why you think if you if you set up a camera in your house, you might see a lot of orbs flying around. They're there. All these things are watching you from the other side. They know what you're doing. They know your heart. They can read your mind. How do you think I telepath? How do you think I talk to these things without seeing what I'm talking to? I can attest to all. The, they can read your mind. You don't have to see them to talk to them. You can talk to them without moving your lips or saying a single word. If you can talk to them mind to mind, they can read your mind. I had one soul, I had one, what you call spirits, tell me she was tempting me. And she said, well, you're, you're, you're a righteous man. You're, you're a man of God. So think carefully before you do this. And that's, what, that's what she said to me. Think carefully, you're a man of God. They're watching you. They want to see if you practice what you preach. They want to see what cloth you're cut from. Is he the real deal? Or he's just faking it? Because we know the fakers. 
Oh, we test them all right, and they all fail miserably. Every time we throw them a nugget, they just take it. Every time we cut them some slack and give them a new tail, they just run for it. They do anything. They do anything for a new skirt. So the second resurrection you cannot obtain, you cannot take part in the second resurrection. The second is it's, it's the baptism of fire because it mostly come the way I took part in it may be different from the way you will take part in it. Mine was a baptism of fire. I was battling, a, it was a titanic struggle between myself and a malevolent force, battling against the diabolic. And I am warning one and all right now everyone if you decide to start walking the way of righteousness and holiness you are going to have to battle you have you're going to have to do battle against the diabolic evil spirits will come calling because they know you're getting away from them and that that is not going to go down easy with them they're going to fight tooth and claw for you for your soul they will tempt you, they will tempt you in your dreams, they will tempt you in real life. And if you fail in your dreams, I am warning you all, you fail in real life. That is how it works. Because the same way you're in life is the same way you're in death. That is why if you died and you have had a bad spirit, a bad attitude of the mind, the same way you had a bad attitude towards others in your life when you were alive, is the same way you would have a bad attitude as a spirit of the dead. That is why some spirits give so much trouble, because they were bad people when they were alive. And they carry the same attitude. It's one of the only things we carry to the other side, is our attitude of the mind who we were will come out in our behavior towards others or to our own selves. The spirit there watching you, every move, everything you say, everything you think of, they can see your thoughts. They know you're corrupted and you're only faking it. You're only pretending. Every time you see that woman go by, you're lost. Every time you see that man go by, you're lost. And then you go home and God knows what you do after 12. Nobody's looking. You think you're alone. You're not. You go. They know. Can see you. And what you're doing. Every time you put on your robe and put on your costume and come out in the church and sing hallelujah. They know you're a faker. Every time you put on your tie and you go and talk about your preaching and teaching. I remember one one man was um, was testifying that it was and he said the spirit when he was he was in the hospital, all those people that he had killed unlawfully and wrongfully and knowingly and deliberately most of them, the works of their father, the devil they will do. You can't become good. You can't become bad. You you can be less bad. But you're bad anyway. <laughs> you can't become good. You, you can be less good. And you take a good man and you put him in a bad situation. You'll suppress his goodness. Maybe you'll swear a few times he gets very, very upset with you. But it doesn't mean he's bad. He's maybe just frustrated. And he'll become less good. But he's good anyway. Because, for example, you give him a million dollars and he gets out of that situation. He doesn't go to the club and hire a whole bunch of prostitutes. He doesn't do that. He says to the glory of God, and he gives his all to his fellow man. All that he can do with that money, he will give his best to help others. Unlike the wicked and the wretched, all he will do if he gets out of that position and gets a million dollars in his pocket, all he will do is just call a bunch of prostitutes and buy the Bentley and the Bugatti, drive around and show off on everybody else. That's what he will do. Oh, look at my shiny car. Look what I got. And you ain't got none. Who is the king now? That's what he'll drive around and pretend like he's something great. Because he's got a little money in his pocket. But a good man will not do that. Even if he does have a bit of money, he'll flash it around because it's not the way of the light. They, he's not a child of darkness. Those who are children of the light don't do that. It's the, the, the lifestyle is different. The way of life is different. The way of thinking is different. Attitude of the mind is different. 
uh, between them and the others come out in their attitude and their, their behavior towards others, their actions towards others. A good man will always be good. You can know the righteous and holy. They're not for turning, even if they're in a bad situation. You can take a good tree and put it in a bad patch of the woods. I don't know, uh, somewhere where there's not much nutrients in the soil and whatnot, and it doesn't get to grow as good. But believe you me, when it does produce fruits, those fruits will be good. You take a bad tree and you put it in a good garden where there's fertilizer and all that artificial nonsense, and you could boost it up all you want. You could get it all that extra energy in. You could boost it up all you want. Whatever that tree produces will be no good. Because the tree is the tree is no good. How can the seeds be good? How can the fruit be good if the tree is no good? The second resurrection is walking in the way of the light. So it's a continuous process. Every day you die a little. Every day you're, re you're reborn. Walking in the way of the light is the, it's like the phoenix. Every minute of the day, you're being renewed, you're being reborn. So for example, we don't use... Uh, the, the, the one who walks in the way of the light won't see humor as a virtue because they would have known better. For example, many things we do and many things we don't do. Uh, giving jokes and being humorous, uh, being humorous and especially when you take it too far, it's a dangerous thing. I'll give you an example. You, you call a man Mr. Head. You just call somebody a nickname, Head. And, if like and I'm telling you, just by calling that man that you're trying to be humorous, you're trying to make a joke, you're trying to be playful and whatnot. But you, by just doing that, I warn you all just to stop it right there. There's three stages to this before it gets out of hand. You call a man, oh, Mr. Head, just stop it there. Because the next thing you're going to do, stage two, is to start to conjure it up in your mind what head he is. Stage three, you, you're going to start conjuring up in your mind all the things that can come out of a head. And before you know it, you end up going too far. It's, it's inevitable that this humor won't turn into something else. That this, that this is a joke you're trying to pull off won't turn into something else. Just by saying... Mr. Head, already a lot of people will be listening to this program, conjuring up in their minds all kind of heads. And they'll be laughing to themselves, or, or laughing with each other. And, and they'll be chatting, and maybe even start to talk about heads now. And that before you know it, it gets out of hand. And there's all kind of other things to this head that they'll be talking about. And all kind of things they'll be talking about doing to this head. And all, all kind of, the, their imagination will be running wild. This is what I'm talking about. I learned the hard way because I went, I, I, I myself, that humor was not a virtue. Humor was not a good thing. Especially for those who want to walk in the way of the light. It was not a good thing. And I only say this for your learning. You see, I'm putting myself out there on the line, tipping the scales a bit just for you to understand better what i'm talking about i'm not interested in in, in your jokes or interested in in your humor it, it doesn't mean that you can't have humor or be you know or make a bit of joke but what it does mean is that there are three stages to it and realizing the stages to it mean you can you can stop you can stop it from spiraling out of control that's all i'm trying to say so stage one, you call, you, you, you say to somebody, Mr. Head, or call the man, oh, Mr. Head, stop it right there. You stop it at stage one, because stage two and three, it's, on, it's, it's going to get out of control. You're not going to be able to control it at all. And you just end up sinning, and, you, and that is the, when I, I did another program about sin, you know, check out my YouTube channel and look for the program Sin. In, in the discussion sin, I mentioned that you only pray for, for, for the forgiveness of sins, your sins, when you have deliberately, knowingly, and woefully done it. That's the only time you pray for sin. You, you can pray for sin whenever you want, but it's pointless praying for sin because you're, it's inevitable. You're supposed to sin. But to learn more about that, why don't you check out my other programs? So, the second resurrection 
remember the first the first that there's two awareness there's three awareness but there's two subcategories of awareness so the set the first awareness which is the first resurrection first awareness there's two awareness the two subcategories to that and then you have the second awareness now the second awareness is walking in the way it's a continuous process it's a lifestyle it means you're renewed every day you're reborn you're continuously walking in the way of the light constantly day by day guided by the angels as you take your baby steps in forming that strong and stronger connection to your creator forming the close and closer relationship to your creator it's a process it's a lifestyle it's a way of life every day you have to walk in the way of righteousness and holiness that's the second resurrection every day you're resurrected again from your dead state because it sin is inevitable you're going to sin it's a bit like taking part in baptism but then you go and you wash off your clothes and you have to do the same thing you've been doing before you got baptized why you think you got baptized to wash your sins away that's the concept that's the idea so if you go on continuous sinning then you're defeating the objective but what's the point being baptized then your sin won't be washed away because you won't be renewed you won't be a no man or a no woman so you'll be wasting your time you'll be wasting your soul you'll be wasting your life and you'll be wasting your eternity because you're going to spend it in a place where you really don't want it so the second resurrection is walking in the way of the light throughout your life's journey and hope and pray asking father to permit and allow the angels to guide you along your life's journey throughout your life's journey guide you in the way of the light so that you walk in the path of righteousness and holiness continuously striving to be good striving to be righteous and holy so that you can find favor in the eyes of god after the end of your life when your life comes to an end and you cross the river so to speak there is a third resurrection but more about that will be our next discussion i appreciate all your subscription i appreciate all your support to the, to the ministry i appreciate your donations and and your charitable givings i appreciate all that and i appreciate uh um, all those who want to join the ministry and all those who have, have joined the ministry I hope what I've said that shed some light is that it's that the righteous and holy are forsaken. It's high time that we look after good people. We look after the righteous and holy among us. This clash of the titans, there is a battle coming. On now to hear the program in your own language, click on the subtitle here. You can see it is already in uh, English subtitle. To get the program in your subtitles, simply click on the on our settings button here, and here you will see that the program is already in English. Uh, go ahead and click on the subtitle button there, and or you can translate the program in your own language by clicking on auto. So by clicking on auto translate, just select your country, and you can listen to the program in your own language click on subtitle there and as you can see it will translate English subtitle so if I go ahead and play the program now you'll see it in the English subtitle there so on our website you'll get the full version videos so why not go ahead and check out our website or our podcast scrolling down by checking out our other packages which you can find in this section down here and you can click on our patreon page here or our spotify page buzzsprout too the other program programs that we're running so that is how you navigate our channel so why not go ahead and click on our, our logo here and or the channel name and this will take you directly to our youtube channel Tap the channel name PGTL101, enter, and or you will see a list of our videos down here. 